we're back with another Atari Lynx Model 2. But this one has a problem. I'm using a power supply that works with my other Lynx 2. And a tested working copy of Gates of Zendicon. But it just won't turn on at all. Luckily, I've seen this before. The usual fix for this problem is replacing the power stage components. This kit is from Digital Delights, link to their store below. No grips here, just four outer screws to remove. Time to operate. not forgetting the fifth black screw hiding inside the battery cover. We're going to replace the capacitors on this board as well, so we'll need to remove this shielding. My desoldering gun is very handy indeed for this. This is the capacitor we need to change. Luckily, it can be accessed through the metal shield. This square of insulating tape can be removed to show the capacitor location. A quick burst of desoldering gunfire. And the capacitor is free of the board. This is a 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor. This is the values are freely available on the internet, or you can buy a capacitor kit from the Digital Delight store. This shielding is getting in the way a bit, so Captain Tape to the rescue. With three hole components, always heat the component lead and solder pad at the same time. I'm using leaded solder here, as would have been used on the original machine in the 90s. Now let's recycle that insulating tape. And removing then reusing the same bit of Kapton tape, we can prepare to get the shielding soldered back into place. A bit of flux. I love a bit of flux. The problem here is that the copper sheet won't lay flat until the solder solidifies. I'm holding it down with my tool. Okay, time to change the rest of these capacitors. I'm this fast in real life, you know. I've replaced both of the capacitors you see here. I forgot to film the second one. Let me show you another one. Standard through hole capacitor again. I won't show each cap, that would get boring quickly. Snip snip. Not looking bad at all. With all the capacitors replaced, it's time to look at the power stage. We are going to be replacing this MOSFET at location Q12, this diode at location D13, both these transistors at locations Q7 and Q8, and this resistor at R74. Some protective capped on tape to stop the caps, plastics and insulation on the inductors melting. And we can try some hot air, although I'm not hopeful on this large part. After two minutes it won't budge, so brute force is required. Sorry. 
Reflowing the pads helps to remove the old solder. Both of those legs are still connected, but only with a small amount of solder now. A bit of flux and let's have a crack at that heatsink. After ages, the MOSFET lifts up. Now we just need to liberate the other legs. Phew, this one was a fighter. A quick clean up of the pads and let's get ready to put the new MOSFET in. The modern part is more resilient than the original part, so should last a good long time. It's also very small and fiddly when working around the camera. More flux. Did I mention that I love flux? And we'll just use the fine tipped soldering iron to install the new package. Try not to touch it too long or your package could overheat. A bit more capped on protection for the surrounding components. And we're back to using hot air for D13 with no problem. Peeling back a bit more of the tape reveals transistors Q7 and Q8. Again, hot air is the order of the day. These are tiny. although I'm well used to handling tiny things. R74 is up next, but offers little resistance. Get it? Now, you might not know, but I love flux. For a bit of variety, I thought I'd show you some hot air SMD soldering using solder paste. This stuff can be a bit messy, and I'm using a bit too much here so you can see what happens more easily on camera. Don't drop these. Seriously. Don't. It's quite a fiddly job, but doable if you take your time. With the hot air, you need to keep moving over the entire component. It's very satisfying to see the solder melt and pull the component into place. And there it goes. It's important to clean the board properly afterwards in case of stray blobs. Having tiny balls can be a big issue. Same process for the transistor then. Again, a bit too much pace so we can see what's happening. A bit wonky but fine, and Atari has installed worse on this machine. For the other transistor, I thought I'd do it with just the soldering iron, so a bit of lovely flux is just perfect here. Most of the battle is getting the transistor into position. There's probably enough solder on these pads already to do the job with the additional flux. The part doesn't take too badly at all. Usually I end up pushing them out of position a couple of times. Just adding a bit more solder to be sure. And finally, 
the dreaded diode. The kit from Digital Delights has a through-hole diode instead of a surface mount part. Usually I replace like for like, but the surface mount part is much more fiddly to install. The leaded part is actually a lot easier. Let's get rid of this capped on tape now we're finished with hot air. I just bend the leads and snip them to the right length. I need new side cutters really. The negative cathode end with the black marking needs to be towards R74 on the board. Oh, you little so-and-so. Ah! Okay, one leads in place. Let's gently move this second leg into position. And soldered. Phew. That's all the components from the kit installed, and I checked with the meter after cleaning the board with IPA. The MOSFET, resistor, both transistors, and the diode. I've reconnected the screen for the moment of truth. The screen lights. And the game starts. Powering off is handled by the MOSFET too, so let's check that. No problemo. And it seems we have a Lynx 2 back from the dead. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. A massive thanks to my amazing Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support my future videos, visit patreon.com forward slash markfixesstuff. Bye!